The second speaker uh, in this session is Professor David Gilo, Director General of uh, Israel Antitrust Authority. Professor Gilo is a leading researcher and a very influential international expert in the, area, in the areas of uh, antitrust and regulation. He has published many important research studies in this field. Prior to his present appointment, Professor Gilo was a law professor at Tel Aviv University Faculty of Law. Professor Gillow will lecture on the transfer of public assets to private hands, competition and concentration. I'm honored to welcome Professor Gillow. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Um, so um, I'm going to talk about the transfer of government assets to private hands and competition and uh, concentration. Uh, a little bit about the, the history of, uh, of this. Um, there was um, a lot of ownership by the public sector of uh, important companies uh, in Israel, uh, either by the government itself, uh, by the Jewish agency, uh, by the largest uh, union. Um, and many of these companies controlled uh, essential facilities. But starting the 1970s, uh, as just as uh, uh, Meltzer uh, mentioned, uh, there, will, there was a wave of uh, privatization of uh, such uh, companies, and most of these were privatized. Uh, and in many or, or most of the cases, uh, they were sold to the highest bidder. Um, so reduction of concentration wasn't um, an aim in most of these uh, privatizations, but uh, mainly uh, to maximize the, the amount of money paid to the government uh, for the company. Um, in many cases, um, the company was sold to the highest bidder, uh, even though the high bid may stem from the monopoly rents or the concentration rents that uh, the buyer of the company can uh, uh, achieve by purchasing uh, the, the company or the, the government uh, asset. Um, the claim could be in such a case that uh, it's a good thing uh, to sell to the highest bidder because then uh, more money uh, flows uh, to the government and then uh, the government can collect less taxes uh, from uh, citizens. Uh, but if the uh, transfer of the asset to the highest bidder increases uh, concentration um, or uh, creates monopoly rents, then uh, generally we think uh, it's a um, bad idea to uh, sell the asset to the highest bidder despite the fact that this can reduce uh, taxes uh, because uh, the concentration evolving from uh, the bid, from the allocation of assets, uh, causes unwanted uh, distortions. Um, consumers pay higher prices and this causes uh, a hidden tax uh, that we don't uh, see uh, clearly uh, but is still there um, and a deadweight loss uh, caused by monopoly uh, pricing uh, and other distortions caused by uh, increased concentration. Um, so we think that generally it's a more sound uh, policy uh, to fund uh, public spending through general taxation uh, rather than through um, transferring these assets to the highest uh, bidder. Uh, when you fund uh, public spending through general taxation, then you can minimize uh, the distortions uh, caused by taxation uh, for example, you can collect uh, taxes only from the rich and not from the poor, and you can plan uh, the tax uh, policy in a way that minim minimizes distortions. Uh, whereas when you um, use a hidden concentration tax by transferring, sorry, by transferring the asset to the, to the highest bidder, uh, then uh, you uh, create a deadweight loss and a distortion that cannot really be uh, minimized. Uh, and the victims of this uh, tax uh, can be uh, the sectors of the economy that you wouldn't want to tax, like the poor, uh, for example. Uh, so this uh, stands in the background of the new concentration law that was enacted in, in Israel 
uh, and came into force uh, last uh, December. Uh, and this law says that when there is a transfer of a government uh, asset, uh, a privatization or a, a license granted to a private firm or a franchise, uh, etc., then uh, the government uh, must uh, consult with either the antitrust authority or uh, the concentration committee uh, chaired by the head of the antitrust uh, authority um, with regard to the implications of uh, the privatization on uh, either competition in the market or overall concentration uh, in the economy. Um, consultation about market competition uh, in the relevant market is with the Director General of the uh, Israeli Antitrust uh, Authority. Um, and we uh, apply to these sort of consultations our uh, usual methodologies that we apply in uh, mergers, for example, or any transaction that might uh, harm competition. Um, so, for example, we consult the government agency um, regarding to whom uh, the asset should be allocated, um, whether to allocate the asset uh, at all, how to determine who wins uh, the bid. Um, another thing to be considered in such uh, privatizations and uh, that we might uh, consult the government about is perhaps to use uh, the privatization of the asset as a means of um, creating a more competitive structure uh, of uh, the market. So, uh, for example, um, if you have a government-owned uh, monopoly in a certain utility uh, and you privatize this company, then you can privatize it piece by piece and create several competitors instead of uh, a monopoly and then change the market structure to a more competitive uh, market structure. Uh, another example could be vertical. Uh, that is, uh, suppose you have a government-owned monopoly that controls the electricity uh, grid, but also controls uh, generators of electricity. And the concern is that it might use uh, its control of the electricity grid in order to harm competing uh, generators of electricity. So if you privatize such a company, you might want to privatize uh, separately the electricity grid and the generators of um, electricity in a way uh, that uh, eliminates this conflict of interest uh, that harms the uh, competition. Um, so a few recent examples that we had uh, regarding um, consultations that we gave government agencies. Uh, one example is a consultation vis-a-vis -vis the authority that's in charge of the allocation of land. Uh, we uh, consulted this agency with regard to allocation of uh, quarries of limestone and uh, dolomite, for example, because uh, we had several uh, horizontal, that is between competitors, and vertical, that is between supplier and uh, buyer, um, concerns about uh, possible harm to competition. Uh, another example is the port of Eilat. A few years ago, the port of Eilat was privatized and we consulted uh, the agency in charge of the privatization uh, not to sell uh, the port of Eilat to a monopoly in the, f in the market for transportation of automobiles from Eilat to the center of Israel because the concern there was uh, that this uh, monopoly in uh, the port of Eilat uh, might leverage its, its monopoly power in order to entrench uh, its monopoly power in uh, the market for transportation of automobiles and then exclude uh, rivals from uh, the market of transportation of uh, automobiles. Uh, another example uh, that's recent is with regard to the allocation of a quarry of uh, a basalt. Um, th this uh, particular quarry may become a monopoly of basalt in the future uh, and uh, the winner of the bid was a large uh, producer of uh, asphalt uh, and basalt uh, is an essential ingredient uh, in certain forms of asphalt. So the concern here was uh, that uh, the asphalt producer would use the basalt uh, monopoly in order to also monopolize uh, the regional uh, asphalt uh, market. 
Uh, we also consulted uh, the agency there with regard to framing uh, the bid, the way they should frame the bid and decide who wins uh, the bid. Uh, for example, do you uh, let uh, the person um, offering the highest royalties uh, to win the bid, uh, and then you inflate the marginal costs of uh, the winner, and he is going to have to pass on these higher marginal costs to end consumers and charge more from end consumers because he won the bid? Or uh, rather, uh, do you uh, offer the asset to the one who offers uh, the lowest price to end uh, consumers? Um, but this is just consultation. We can't tell the agency what to do. We just advise the agency about the competitive implications of allocating the asset or the competitive implications of uh, the way they uh, form the bid, etc. Uh, so our role is merely advisory uh, and the agency may uh, refuse uh, to adopt our um, advocacy, uh, for example, for other reasons that the agency is allowed to consider according to its other goals other than uh, competition and uh, concentration. Uh, and indeed, in recent cases, we did uh, have um, cases where the agency didn't uh, agree uh, to our consultation, uh, which is fine. Uh, another aspect of the new concentration law is with regard to overall concentration in the economy. Uh, so when the allocation of the asset is of an, an essential facility, and there's a list of essential facilities in the statute, um, or a government-owned company, uh, then consultation is with regard to overall concentration in the economy, and not only with regard to competition in a relevant uh, market. And consultation is with uh, the concentration committee that's chaired by the Director General of the uh, Antitrust uh, Authority. Um, so the consultation is only when the government agency wants to transfer the essential facility uh, to um, a concentrated entity. And a concentrated entity is defined according to its overall uh, local turnover or to its turnover in markets uh, where it is dominant or uh, if it controls a mass media network or if it's uh, dominant in uh, a certain field of an essential facility. Um, so what is overall concentration in the economy? Uh, this is uh, a new term that didn't exist uh, before and hardly exists uh, in the literature, and it's different from market uh, concentration. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, market, market concentration, the ordinary uh, issue or methodology that we use, uh, is market power or bargaining power vis-a-vis -vis consumers. Uh, whereas overall concentration, is when a, a business group has bargaining power vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, government agencies or the legislator. Um, so, for example, um, a company or a business group may control a, an essential facility that the economy depends upon, such as electricity, uh, natural gas, airports, and uh, so forth. Um, and uh, the degree of uh, concern about overall concentration may depend uh, on the degree of control that the company or business group has over the essential facility uh, field uh, and uh, the degree of dependence that the government or the economy has on the essential uh, facility and the number of al alternatives uh, that the government has uh, to utilize uh, this uh, essential facility, but for the business group that uh, received the government uh, asset. Uh, or, for example, um, the concern could be exacerbated when the government wants to um, allocate a different essential facility to the same uh, business group that already has an essential faci facility, uh, particularly when both essential facilities are covered by the same regulator. Uh, for example. So this gives a, a, an incentive uh, to pressure this regulator um, uh, more uh, than uh, before. Um, also, according to discussions in uh, Parliament, 
uh, when a company controls a news uh, network or a nationwide newspaper, this also gives this company or business group consider considerable bargaining power vis-a-vis -vis, uh, regulators or the legislators or uh, government uh, agencies. Uh, so in uh, the antitrust authority, we created a list of uh, concentrated uh, entities according to the law. And according, uh, according to the data that we collected, uh, there is a relationship between uh, being concentrated, being uh, large, and receiving an essential facility in privatizations of um, assets. So, for example, 75% of the large entities also have possession of uh, an essential facility. Uh, and almost half of these companies uh, have a dominant position in the field of the essential uh, facility. Um, another and final point is that consumer welfare, according to the law, always outweighs concerns of overall concentration uh, in the economy. So if there is a concern of overall concentration uh, and uh, somebody is considering uh, not allocating the asset to somebody because of such a concern, this concern is always outweighed by consumer welfare. So if the consideration of overall concentration uh, is outweighed by consumer welfare, consumer welfare always uh, prevails. Um, okay, so I'll end here. Thank you very much.